Okay, thanks for coming along. I'm Paul McGowan. Let's get to our question and see what is on the agenda for today. Ron from Hayes, Virginia. As an analog enthusiast, I'm contemplating a playback system capable of absolute zero mechanical friction and maximum isolation of vibration and resonance. Aren't we all? Also, considering incorporation of a micro MC head amp into tone arm to provide increased noise isolations. What are your thoughts? Hmm, a lot of, a lot of questions there. Um, well, as an analog enthusiast, if you want a, a playback system capable of absolute zero mechanical friction, I'm afraid you're out of luck when it comes to a turntable. Turntables work on friction. So and I hope I'm understanding your, your question, Ron. Let's assume that that's not actually what you mean. Again, the, one of the problem with engineers and people with engineering minds is that we tend to take things kind of literal. Uh, I, I struggle with the engineers here all the time, and, and it's sort of a language we have to use. When I talk to creatives, people who do our marketing or sales or even administration, there's a certain poetry that we can speak in uh, where words don't have literal exact meanings and we can uh, communicate fairly easily. When I speak with, and then I go from that meeting into our engineering meeting, and there I have to, you know, uh, switch my whole headset, uh, mindset, because most engineers are very literal people. If I say I want to have no distortion, you know, you get a head scratch and they're thinking, what the hell's wrong with this guy? There's no such thing as no distortion. It's impossible. And of course, I'm, I'm exaggerating to, to make a point. I, I can't do that with engineering people. And I don't know if Ron is in that same camp. And um, it's just a different way of communicating. And I apologize. There are many ways to improve on vibration damping, on lowering resonances. And that it, it all matters, believe me. I, I've spent a lot of time working on stuff like that. And one of the best ways to do it is kind of what we've done or tried to do in Music Room One. We've physically separated the equipment, the, the source equipment, into a little closet off to the side. Now, it doesn't eliminate it because there's still bass frequencies that are vibrating throughout the room. We can't get rid of that. But it's far enough away that it really reduces much of the resonance and the vibration problems that we had before. So physically isolating it, like if you could, I mean, this is stupid because it's really hard to do. You can't put it in another room. But if you could, if you could have a listening room and then a separate room that was adjacent to the listening room and you went out the door and walked in and put the, the needle down and then ran back real quick and sit and, ah, oh, okay, you know. A um, little impractical, but something like that would be the ultimate. While we can't do that, what we can do is use a, a number of means of, of bases, of suspension systems, of uh, devices that are specific to lowering resonances and in um, reducing vibrations. The last part of here kind of intrigued me a little bit. This is, this is something that I've thought of myself for a while to put a moving coil head amp into the tone arm itself. So most systems of tone arms, in fact, everyone I've ever seen, you have you know basically a cartridge and a tone arm, and then through the tone arm, we run the wires and they come out, and then they go on a cable over to a moving coil head amp. If you could actually build that head amp, which if you eliminate the case and all, can be really small, the actual electronics in a head amp are very small. In fact, I've seen if you have a moving coil step up transformer, you could place that cleverly inside base of the tone arm, for example, so that there's almost no wire and then you're jacking the signal up by a good 30 dB. And if you did something like that, yeah, I think there would be advantages to that. Uh, 
someone's probably already done that, build a head amp into the, into the shell. I remember, <laughs> this is just real funny. I don't, some of this stuff just pops in my head. I was at a show and I think it was in a CES in Vegas. Dave Fletcher, he and Robert Becker started a company called Soda, state of the art. They made a great turntable. They, they did um, HDCD. If, if you've ever heard of HDCD, uh, that was Dave Fletcher and Robert Becker and I think the guys from Spectral. Uh, but they, they all were part of that whole group. Anyway, Dave's a great guy and a real, he, he, he can deliver a joke with the straightest of faces and you don't know if he's kidding. And he was at the show and he says, hey, Paul, come here. And he pulled out out of his, his uh, pocket this, this box and he opens it up. And there is a beautiful head shell with a gorgeous little cartridge on it. And out of the top were two female RCA jacks. And he goes, that is the future of tone arms. And I looked at that and I thought, well, now that's really cool. You've eliminated all the wires. And Dave's just staring at me like, come on, idiot. You'll get it. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's not going to track too well with a pair of wires coming out of the top. <laughs> he definitely got me on that one. But yeah, you're talking about something a little more elegant than, than Dave's joke. But yeah, I bet it could be, I bet it could be done and it might be cool. Thanks for asking. Talk to you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.